Hello students, this is Miss Henderson and today we are going to be discussing part three of the medication administration. And as we know, there are different routes that a patient can get their medication. So topical administration. So what are some medication that is given topically through the skin? So think about the different topical creams we have. We have desitin, we have zinc oxide, we have bacitracin. We have different types of cream that is applied topically. Now the mucous membrane is highly sensitive to certain medication. That's another route that medication can be administered. The inhalation route are medications that are given through inhalation, such as nebulizers, albuterol atrovent uh, treatments. Intraocular routes are your um, ophthalmic solutions, medications that are given ophthalmically, such as your eye drops, artificial tears, so on and so forth. System of medication measurement. They are three systems of medication administration. Uh, the metric system is the most um, commonly used system, and it works with, um, the, it's a decimal system. So examples of the metric systems are like meters, liters, grams, and so on and so forth. The household system is also most familiar to individual, but the disadvantage of the household system is inaccuracy. So examples of the household systems are like tablespoon, teaspoon, pints, gallons, so on and so forth. Then we have the apothagari system that has to do with drams, grams, fluid, ounces, so on and so forth. Nursing knowledge base. Safe administration of medication is imperative to reduce errors. Nursing process provides a framework for medication administration. So it's important as a nurse to um, practice safe medication administration. Um, do your, your clinical calculations. If you have to convert um, units into another units, um, do your calculations and double check your medications before you can administered those calculation method so the the ratio the different types of uh, the three actually the ratio and proportion method then we have the formula method which is um dose order dose in hand and the amount on hand and then we have the dimensional analysis um problems that we can use dimensional analysis. So a lot of times I think um, students like to use dimensional analysis because you can really, um, you know, relate to dimensional analysis. You set up the problem, um, isolating the variables that you need to solve for. So these are the three different methods of uh, medication calculations. Healthcare provider's role. So, as we know, the uh, prescribers can be a physician, can be a nurse, could be also a nurse practitioner or a physician assistant. They are the one who have the authority to uh, prescribe medication. As a nurse, as an RN, we are not allowed to prescribe medications because. It is not within our scope of practice. We can administer it based on a physician's order. 
So their orders can be written hand or electronic, verbal or given by a telephone. It's important if you receive an order through telephone that you read back the order for clarification of the medication. The use of abbreviations are not recommended in nursing. Avoid using abbreviations to reduce medication errors. Types of orders in the acute care. So a PRN order is given when the patient requires it. So an example of a PRN order might be acetaminophen 325 milligrams, two tabs, orally, Q6 hours PRN for temperature greater than 101. Another PRN order could be colis 100 milligrams orally, three times a day PRN. A standing or a routine order is administered until the doses is changed or amount of medication is prescribed. An example of a standing or routine order is level, level quin 500 milligrams orally once a day. Another example of that is Decatron 10 milligrams once a day times five days. Then we have this single or one-time order. <clears throat> so the single or one-time order is given one time only for a specific reason. For example, activant one milligram IV times one. Then we have the now order. When a medication is needed right away, but it's not stopped. Example, vancomycin, one gram, IV, piggyback, now. Then we have the stat order. The stat order is given immediately in an emergency situation. Example, a patient may be experiencing anginal pain. The doctor may give you an order for nitroglycerin, 0 0.4 milligram, sublingually stacked. Another example of a stat order, a patient might be um, hypokalemic and the doctor might order potassium chloride 20 milliequivalent orally stacked. So these are the different types of medication um, orders that can be given by the doctor. This is an example of how the medication is written and um, the routes, the name, the frequency of the medication. And it also on the prescription pad, the doctor must indicate his um, DEA number. So the, physis, the, the pharmacist's role, what is the role of a pharmacist? So the pharmacist is the one that prepares and distributes the medication. They also educate clients about the side effect or drug interaction and incompatibility and toxicities of the medication. So the role of a nurse, the role of a nurse is to determine the medication's order are correct assessing the patient's ability to self-administer the medication. So assessing the patient's cognitive ability. Also assessing the patient's psychomotor skill. Is the patient able to open a bottle to, to get the medication? Um, medications cannot be delegated to a certified nursing assistant or a PCT. So it's not within their scope. It's important that when you administer medications, you follow the um, proper um, medication administration protocol of your facility. Make sure your patient um, take the medication, they swallow it before you leave. 
medication administration. So we know that we have a distribution system, unit dose system, automatic medication dispensing system, which is a computer system that is used to dispense all medications, including narcotics. So nurses must um, have an access code so they can log in by using their user's name and password to access the medication. So medication errors, report all medication errors to the physician immediately. Monitor the patient closely for any deviations such as their vital signs. Um, also, the nurse is responsible for preparing a written incident accident report with the factual description of what occurred and what was done. Nurses play an essential role in medication reconciliation. I have an NCLEX style question. If a nurse experiences a problem reading a physician's medication order, the most appropriate action will be to call the physician to verify the order. And a lot of times, um, physicians write very, some of them write very illegible. It's, it's, only, it's, it's, it's impossible to read their writings. So if you can't understand it, please do not transcribe the order because the chances of making a medication error will be increased. So the best thing to do is to call the phys physician, read the order to him, and let him um, verify it, clarifies the order. So critical thinking, we know it's important as a nurse to integrate critical thinking in your nursing practice. And also use your past experience, merge your past experience to what you're doing or what you're learning to deepen your understanding. Psychomotor skills is the hands-on skill to give an IV or an IM or a sub-Q injection. So it's, 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 it's imperative that you learn the um, theoretical knowledge, but it's also important that you learn the psychomotor skill as a nurse. How about the attitude of a nurse? Take Take your time, be disciplined, be responsible and accountable for your actions. So that's very important to integrate professionalism in your nursing practice standards. Ensure safe nursing practice. Do your three checks to medication administration, such as the doctor's order versus the MAR. The MAR, medication administration record versus the medication and the medication versus the patient's identification then. So actually there's seven rights to medication administration. So the right medication, the right dose, the right patient, the right route, the right time, right documentation, and the right to refuse. The patient has the right to refuse the medications. So if a patient refused the medication, what would be your nursing interventions? You will try to um, find out the reason, the rational, why the patient refuses the medication. And you will um, inform the physician. You can also um, try to reason with the patient by telling them the pros and cons of not taking their medications but you also should document that in the nurse's note and inform the physician. So maintaining the patient's right. A patient has the right to be informed about the medication, to, be re to refuse a medication, to have a medication history, to be properly advised about the experimental nature of the medication, certain medications is used for experimental purposes, to receive a label medication safely, to receive appropriate supportive therapy, not to receive unnecessary medications, to be informed if the medication are part of a research study. I have an NCLEX style question, and this is a very easy question. 